now we're going to work with the musk here. Well, I mean, it's a castorium. Castorium is way more pungent. I'm just going to try to, to nail the skin layer off. And then um, I know we want as fine as... See what we're working with inside of it. Okay. Huh. Well, I'm gonna try to grade it then. Let's go that method. Some people don't like this method. Some people do. Literally just pick this off off Amazon. Pretty cheap. And let's go. It's grading down pretty good. Oh, look at the powder. There you go. You're going for a powder to extract it into your macerations and whatnot. So, it's doing pretty good. The smell is pungent. Definitely got store in. It's awesome. That's what it looks like there. But it's grading all down to powder. What we want. Other tinctures. Let's go. So, what do you have next? I, I don't know if I did this right or not. I have musk, uh -huh. castorium on a plastic bag, yeah, opal, frankincense, black opal. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping this this was just this is my last one. Look how chunky. But the oh. white opal broke up. I hope this breaks up too. Yeah, wait, is that the copal? Black, black. Oh, okay, yeah. It looks quite big pieces. It might benefit being a little smaller. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, look, look what I, this one killed me, man. What is this one? Frankincense. Oh, yeah. very nice, yeah. Because you told me 35%, so. Yeah, yes. That's full to 400. Excellent, that's great, yeah. I have a, a couple here, like, this is one of my rooibos tinctures, and you can see how much rooibos is in the bottom. But I did take some of this out to make a separate resinoid with it. I um, have a small resinoid here that I made from that rooibos. It took me so much work. Yeah, it is. It's hard work crushing the frankincense, and it has a tendency to shoot off as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the office smelled good up until I pulled the castorium out, and then it just smelled yeah. good. It does dominate everything. Yeah, and then um, there's the musk. Uh -huh. Excellent. I'm going to go get a weight on this musk. That's one thing I didn't do, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. No, I don't mind. One day I'll have the scale set up here, too. Uh-huh, sure. So let's talk musk for a second here. And um, so I got a 43 gram pod. I dissected it yesterday. I don't know if I did that right or not. Uh -huh. um, oh, the memory card's full. Great. Um, so I put this in here going away. I don't, it's alcohol, so I think it's good. Mm -hmm. 
and I, I'm, I have 20 grams of, from 43, I have 20 grams of grain. Is that about oh, right? Excellent. Yeah, yeah, that's lovely. Okay. Mm. So um, I want to stretch. There are hairs in this, so there can't be, right? It the hairs are probably not as big a problem. It, are you doing a tincture or a maceration with that? Well, I want to do four different things with this. Right. Okay. The hairs shouldn't be an issue. I mean, I, I'm a bit um, picky and I like to get everything out of there, but it's very hard to get every piece out. You can sit there for an hour with a pod kind of going through with tweezers, getting uh, everything out of it. And the more I did it, the the grains scattered more. So I was just like, uh, uh. yeah. <laughs> and then I only did, so this, I don't, this is unusable, right? I need to go through this. There's a couple more grains I can get in this, the top half. The top half. No, that could be tinctured as well. Oh, so just throw it in there with the, yeah, I would, the yes. little grains that are on there. It'll add. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Let's but for the tincture only though, not the maceration. Yeah. This is, this is the tincture. Yeah. So I'm doing this in the lychee as well. Uh huh. Excellent. Yeah, I'll be really interested to see how that turns out. <clears throat> there we go. Yeah, you'll find they get a, a different aroma. The pod and the the musk grain. The pod tends to veer towards a slightly more urine like note. Uh, it's quite high piercing deer musk note, whereas the grains seem to have that more heart element to it. So it tends to be like a high note urine like deer musk and then a kind of more uh, sparkling um, radiant deer musk for the, the grains. And then I heard on this you only use high end sandalwood. So yeah, I would for sure. Yeah, I wouldn't. It's a waste of time if you use low quality sandalwood and you're making deer musk. This is a thing that I think a lot of people ask me. They're like, can I use different things instead of sandalwood because of the cost? And I would avoid that if you're using deer musk or in a really nice musk is don't skimp on the sandalwood. Uh, That's the best stuff I am. Which one's that? The 2002 Mysore. Oh, excellent. Yeah, that's it. that'll be a beauty for it. So, and you do 10% here on this? It, again, it depends. Um, I, I was doing, I started off doing about 5%. Then I worked up to 10%. Now I find 10% even a bit too mild and I'll push it to 20%. Um, and you do notice that the the more prominent aroma and I'm more interested in that concentrated scent now rather than, but most people when they start, they like that. They don't want to spend too much. They don't want to throw all their deer musk in a small amount of sandalwood. Um, so yeah, just work your way up and get addicted to that scent of deer musk. What do you, what do you use in suga? In suga musk? Yeah. So I used a old, um, a, a old Yemeni, blend of the, the, the ingredients are not quite known it was picked up from uh, by dan from apothecary's garden from a yemeni perfumer who had died and his son was selling his um materials and he found this musk there which was apparently 50 years old um and it was a blend it seems i've seen this blend again other people doing this blend and they'll usually use Ambergris, deer musk, local resins, civet, um, and kind of mush it all together into a paste. There might be some other secret method I really don't know about, but it's a kind of traditional musk blend uh, that I used in Tsuga musk. Wow. Okay. What percentage? What percent for... The, the, yeah, did you do a 5, 10, 15, 20%? I don't even remember. Honestly, I have a 300 formula written out across six books, and I just don't remember. Yeah, I'm, I'm making the decision now, so I got my best sandalwood. I yeah. 10%. It's one ounce. Mm -hmm. Great, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go get another bottle. Uh-huh, no problem. <laughs> so 
so 33, what, what, what's one ounce? About 33 ml? 28 ml, I think one ounce. Oh, is it 38? 28. Oh, 28. 28 for an ounce. There we go. Ah, I got to turn the camera on again. Yeah, this is the the musk, the ambergris. Now it's already got that dark color straight away. So the the ethanol works as a really good solvent to immediately draw out the oils of uh, whatever's put in it. Mm -hmm. Look at my. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, it's changed color straight away. Okay. This one I'm most nervous about, man. This yeah. Is, it's just good material. I mean, just uh -huh. the loan is. It's going to be better soon. It was good. It's going to be great. I can, I'll let this drip later. Yeah. All right. And where is my trusty little spoon? Here it is. So we just need like three grams of this. Mm -hmm. I'm eyeballing it. That's okay, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, I do this a lot of the time now with tinctures. It's just visually, and you'll find after a while of doing it, you just get a feel and you know how much needs to be in there. So for everybody watching that doesn't want to, we're going for three grams. Mm -hmm. I'm going for the, the label on a bottle. And I'm, I'm being picky. I'm just trying to get the most powder ones at the bottom here. Yeah. And then this is a healthy three. I bet this is about four, which um, is okay. Yeah, it is. I love that. <laughs> All right. More rest the that. Yummy, yummy. Hey, there's material on that. Thank you for doing this. You have no idea what a help to people is. Oh my goodness, that looks better than any I've bought. In yeah, as far as quantity, uh huh. Again, you can do the same thing well, almost the same thing with the DM musk. You give it a bain marie, so again, keep it in warm water, um, but not too high a temperature. DM musk is, has more volatile high notes than ambergris, so pack. Oh, you froze. You froze. Uh oh. Well, we wait to get you. Maybe 35 degrees maximum. Uh, yeah. You froze on that, just so you know. Okay, okay. Yeah, I noticed a little bit of a connection issue there. So um, let's. that was important information. Do you mind repeating just in case? Yeah, we're... sure. So when you, uh, you have your DMS maceration, you can do the Bain Marie with this. So putting it heating up your pan um, to about 35, 40 degrees, take it off the heat, put in your bottle, borosilicate bottle with the maceration in there, top on tightly, um, let it sit in there. Uh, because it's off the heat, it's going to gradually, gradually cool down and you can keep repeating this process and you'll notice the oil start to come out with the DM musk more. You could also keep it in a warm place, like say if you have a boiler room um, next to the boiler or somewhere that's hot in the house all the time that's free of other strong scents. Uh, as long as the tops on tightly, it's not going to be influenced by other scents around, so that shouldn't be too much of an issue. But um, yeah, you want it somewhere warm. I have friends in Saudi who've done DM musk tinctures and theirs come along so much quicker than mine in UK because of that continuous 30 to 40 degree temperature there, that is the ideal temperature to keep the musk at. 
Whereas here in the UK, it's like between five and 20. Um, so it doesn't reach that 30 degrees temperature here very often. Okay, we're at about right under 10 grams. So I'm gonna do about 100 ml. Uh -huh. of the lychee as well. I wanted lychee for all three of these on purpose. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be very interesting to see if that note still lingers within each three. You'll be able to notice once they're um, matured you'll and do them on a testing strip you, or on your skin, you'll be able to notice if that note's still there or what influence that note had. It went to 125, so I'm going to add more. Yeah. And, well, then I have, I'm going to do some little ones with, uh, I have some other alcohols with notes too. Uh huh. Excellent. So we'll see how that works. Man, this is exciting stuff. It is. And it gets it more interesting as time goes on because once they start to fuse together, that interest grows and your favorite oil now became even more interesting. Uh, and they only get better, those DM musk macerations, ambergris, they just get better and better over time. And it's like creating your own little, um, what do they call it? Uh, time capsule, uh, almost like that, an olfactory time capsule you can smell later. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, you can see it's absorbing the, the color already. Yeah, and then what's well, amazing, even in two weeks, how much brainstorming is going on with you, uh -huh. and others, and there's so much further to push. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there really is. It's, I mean, the, the world of scent, it, it's like a tree. You, you start along that branch, that trunk of the tree, and you just see one path forward for a while, and then things. Once you get a few branches, things just branch off again and again and again. The more you look, the more you find and different people doing very interesting things with scent. And the, I think the rest are pretty basic. I mean, this this to me is just too much, but... Yeah, it's a lot in there, but it'll still be fine. You'll find when the alcohol goes in, the, the matter will settle down a little bit. It'll, it'll compress maybe about 10 to 15 percent. Um, so it will reduce in its size. Uh, you know what I'm going to use in here? What? Pear alcohol. Oh, excellent. That'll pair, that'll pair really well with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't meant to be a poor joke there. That really wasn't. It just came out. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, that'll be nice. No, I say that the, the joke wasn't from your DJ days. No. <laughs> so I'm going to do the pair in here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have an empty pitcher. Do I have? Well, I can do the rest with this lychee with the coat white. Yeah. And then this will be free, and I can. I might as well fill them all on video. I have an interesting copal here too. Um, this is a white copal. Uh, they sometimes call pom. Um, the front. Sorry? I see the front of that. This one. So this uh, is protium copal. Oh, sorry. Uh, this one. Yeah, protium copal. Uh, so it's a white copal. Um, this is a huge chunk that the trees must ooze such big um, masses. But, uh, yeah. That was my image. Uh, excellent. Copal. What is the last part? Oh, this is the, the black one. This is the white one, Blanco. Oh, okay, okay. Spanish, just Spanish for white and black. Uh huh, yeah. How does yours smell? Uh, like weird, fresh, very fresh. Um, it, I mean, if you have your eyes closed, you get that sparkle of frankincense, but that's it. Nothing else of frankincense. Just yeah. pop, spark, but it's cleaner, yep. crisper, uh -huh. very citrusy. Yeah, yes, it has a citrusy element. This one smells a little bit more like, it, as soon as I smell it, it's like a riverbank of kind of kind of green plants, ozone, that watery 
element that's a bit uncommon in perfumery, like an oceanic ozone element to it. But it also has that citrus, like frankincense quality. Yeah, it provides an ozone too. Like, yeah, yes. Like frankincense, myrrh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Glad. The ambergris has that beautiful ozone element as well as yeah. nature. Yeah, it's the perfect ozone as well as seaweed. Uh, seaweed goes so well with um, ambergris. Oh man, look how thick that is. This, I I mean, it had some of the wood in it. Uh huh. Oh, I, I don't That'll know. be okay. What you can do um, is filter it, say, after. Maybe even one month, you might find that all of the resin disappears. Maybe even sooner. You might find in a few days. It depends on that type of copal and how kind of crystalline it is. But um, once you filter it, you'll get a really clean, uh, beautiful resinous, he resin heavy tincture. You'll find all of those resin tinctures, they're so sticky once they're done. Yeah. Oh, even as, as the material itself is sticky? Much more sticky. Once it's done, it will be like a really quite a difficult material to work with. Um, These I did last week when I first got my oil. This is a color. Oh, okay. So it's uh -huh. a nice, very herbish. It's very uh, medicinal. These are yeah, very, yes. Excellent. But such a dark, not quite weeds, but not... Uh -huh. not not herbs either, so just a yeah. green, just a new oh. kind of green that I'm playing. Yeah, with. I've not tried comfrey before. It's one of the herbs I've not tried the tincture. So I went to a medicinal farm last year. Uh -huh. A bunch of stuff from them. I got um, uh, mother motherwort. Uh huh. Excellent. Yeah, type of artemisia. Yeah. And then, so I'm excited about that. Okay, I'm gonna do the pear and do this frankincense in front of everybody real quick. So, pardon me while I take these off one more time. Mm -hmm. So I had one more uh, material here. I'll show you what I started with and what I ended with. So this is a uh, black pine. Uh, this one here, big chunk of black pine and I did that same process you're doing with the frankincense um, put it to a tincture and then evaporated it down to just the resinoid so this is like a very thick resinoid it does not move um, when you pour it it's it's almost crystalline when you open it you'll see that there's crystals this is inside of it sorry this is pine tar um, well, it's like purified pine tar. Yeah. Well, I my earphones off. That's all. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. I was talking away there. I didn't realize uh, you couldn't hear me. People, people can hear you. It's perfect. Oh, okay. Okay. That's great. People will. Yeah. And I have one last one I was going to do, but I don't have everything with me. It's a, a Sam tea um, tincture. And I need to reduce this one down. So I was going to filter it. We can maybe do it on another episode. Um, filter it down, show just the process of how you put it through the filter paper in the funnel, get it into another bottle, you and how you evaporate it. Sorry? You have everything ready to do that? Do you want to do that? Not right now, I don't. Maybe next episode, because I, I don't have another vessel. That's what I'm missing, um, one other vessel to put this in. I may have one upstairs. If I can shoot off, then I could do it. I have, yeah, well, uh, let's do another one because I have three tea tinctures that are. Okay, sure. We'll do that later. Yeah, we can do it together. Excellent. So you're going to have to tell me what I need to have for this. Great, yeah. What I'll do, I bought some really nice tea recently and I, I plan on doing another. So I have it in three stages. I have one to do straight from the tea. I have one to reduce down. And I have the end products of like the resinoids that I've made from the tea. Um, which are really nice, uh, a very unique scent and perfumery. So this is kind of sticky. Any tricks? Just pour an alcohol. Any sorry, what? This is kind of sticky in this bottle. Any tricks? So just pouring off alcohol and shake. Pouring in the alcohol or pouring it off? 
Yeah, well, any any tricks to loosen this up, or just just pour in the alcohol and get it going? It looks a little bit thick. A little, is that frankincense? I co- the copal, sorry. This is frankincense. I mean, it's it's thick and powdery. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can pour it straight in. It should. You want it as powdery as possible, like to to work for the the best. And I'm just a bit fussy like that. I like to get it super powdered. Get your ethanol in, you'll find it immediately. But once it's filtered, you're not going to have issues. Oh, excellent! All the powder is sticking. Great. Oh, my little pe- there's a there's a powder. what what I use. I might have it with me. I have just glass stirrers, like a long glass stirrer, and you can get it in. Hopefully, it won't break if it's stuck together. If it's too stuck, pouring in the alcohol is going to loosen it off a bit, and then the shaking. Yeah, that's going to be great. Um, so I would just pour in the ethanol. It's going to loosen up that stuff. But what you might find is that the ethanol fills on the top and the bottom stays dry. Oh, so yeah. shaking is going to be fine with that. You're going to get it loose with shaking. And then everybody, real quick. So how I did this is the same as we did in the Amber Green video that's up. Um, it, it's just pestle mortar and grinding away. I could have done better, but I used 10% more material than Alex recommended. So I'm already above the game. So I'm forty percent. You said thirty, thirty-five, right? Yeah, around there. It's really not a hard and fast rule, and just experiment, and you'll find uh, interest in. I mean, this, this is. I was into a thousand and all. This is already fi- over five hundred. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it will reduce down to yeah. about ten percent. Like I said, maybe. Um, I think you're right. I I measured it at about forty percent. So yeah, I think that's you're absolutely right. Okay. So let's just pour it in and then shake. So this is the pear. Uh-huh. This is the first thing I thought of, of mixing with pear is frankincense. Yeah, frankincense has that like similarity to pear. I find and elements of lime, pear, uh, ruchus as well. The green vetiver it has that clo- very close aroma and elemi for sure. And those other kind of light resins like brie branco. Uh, you get in South America. Man, I'm short. So that's 900. I'll I'll pour in some more later. We're going for 1,000 ml on this, folks. And then, like you said, wow, it shapes right up. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Wow, look at that. Goodness. (laughs) What I find really interesting with the frankincense when I did the tincture I left it for a while and then I came back and it had settled like you'd see sediment perhaps like a cross section of land it had settled in such a lovely way like the the colors had lined up through the frankincense it was amazing that's amazing brilliant yeah you can see it's absorbed a lot of resin straight away your your powder method yeah and I know we have a lot of mad people watching that'll do a better job than me. I am going to do this anyways. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to beat this up anymore. I think you'll be okay. Like we said, copals tends to dissolve really quickly. So I think you should be okay with that. And I am going to use a cane, only cane sugar for this one. Mm-hmm. Have you smelled black copal before? I haven't actually. I, I did have some black Styrax um, and some Damar that was black, but I'm not exactly sure if it's the same botanical. Um, I have a little book. I have some black copal written down, which I had. Um, I might be able to. I have two right here, but this this has the top of the white copal in it. Yeah. Black copal. But this stuff, as soon as I smelled it, have you heard of House of Matriarch? No, I haven't, no. So she's a big high-end perfumer, uh, mm-hmm. natural perfumer, but yeah, mostly natural. And she uh-huh. does a really authentic black leather. Mm-hmm. This is one of the main ingredients. I didn't know until I bought okay. the material. So I think it is the similar thing. I think it is the black Styrax um, because Styrax has that very leathery aroma. And I remember I got some black Styrax a while ago, just as the resin. And I, this was before even I'd got into making my own perfume. So it's something I encountered a while back. And then only recently I'd seen um, an interest in black copal 
essential oil I wanted to try because I hadn't tried that before. But I think it's um, Proteum Grandifolium is the black copal, um, which may be the black Styrax. I'll have to do a little bit of research just to pair that up. I can't show this alcohol. It's it's a five gallon liter, so I'm not picking that up. Yeah, right now, or five gallon container. So that's that's why I got my trusty picture. Right, black, but it still keeps that fresh top with that leather smell. It's amazing material. Uh -huh. Oh, excellent. So yeah, that black copal, I think, is the Proteum grandifolium. Um, yeah, Peruvian black copal. Um, and I think this is the same as the black Styrax. Um, so I bought 50 grams, so I'm doing 10% on this. We'll see how 10% works. I know you like stronger, but... I oh, it's your thing, though. Uh, just if you ask me... My opinion, I'll say it quite clearly, and you're totally which we should do exactly what you want to do with it. So there we go. Excellent. Yeah. yeah, you can see again; it's absorbed so much of the the resin. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Amazing. So it's quick. It is. Yeah, I think I had a. Maybe I didn't bring down the copal. I had some copal resinoid I'd extracted as well. Um, and then, so, yeah, so people don't, I know people are freaked out about, and, and they want exactly how you did it, exactly this and that. Yeah. Part of this is us experimenting on what we like. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. And you will find your own path through it. There's no one fixed path to do, to, to make that tincture. There's just the common path people like you're trying with the pear alcohol uh, and the cane sugar and the different varieties to see what interest and in notes can be derived from that and if they'll complement the perfumes as well and then to make it an absolute is it just burning off the alcohol pretty much it's filtering so you want to filter out all of the particles because those particles I'll, I'll just cause problems when you're evaporating later on. So, and then it's just evaporating off. So this was castorium tincture here. This started off um, as about 300 ml of castorium. And this is down. So, oh, sorry, it was 300 ml um, by volume with the castorium in it. So I took out about 160 ml castorium and then reduced it down to like 6 ml here. Um, so there's very like little left, but this potency is so high compared to the tincture and it's so clean as well and rounded. Uh, gets a really nice aroma. A coffee filter? Yes. Well, I use lab paper. So um, a coffee filter is fine though. Um, but I use these... Um, well, it's expensive materials, so you don't want to lose anything. Yeah, yeah. So these can be folded into a cone. You just... Um, not a very good cone there, but you would put it like that. And even if it's a off cone, you can fold it around, make your little cone to put in there, and then just filter through that directly into your bottle. Obviously, you want your funnel as well. If you have your funnel, you get it in there put it in your bottle to filter it. You, can, you might have to do it twice with some materials, maybe even three times if you want the colour uh, less. You can actually filter the colour out by, keep, by repeating. Um, and it, that also depends on the, the uh, micron size of your filter paper as well. But that's more for major perfumes, like if you want to, and they'll have machines to do this process better. But... Um, if you wanted, say, a more clear oil at the end instead of a darker oil, you could continue filtering and filtering, and you'll you'll lighten the uh, tincture over time. But well, we forgot the my main material, castorium. We forgot. Oh, okay, yes. So, I don't have my castorium nearby. All, all I have nearby is what I'd actually reduced I, down. I want to have that one there, uh, an absolute. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to carefully move it in front of me. Uh -huh. Two more bottles. 
Yeah. Okay, so are we at 35% on this too? Are you gonna, are you gonna eat up all my ingredients? Yeah, I tend to do it quite a high percentage, um, around 35% visually. Um, like to get as much of that oil out with the castorium as possible. I don't like to go half-hearted with it. All right, let's go. And then I'm just going to do a cane with this. Mm -hmm. Does castorium go, like, will my 100 ml go a long ways? Your 100 ml of castorium tincture? Yeah. Yeah, it will. Yeah, it can it can last a long time and it's a really strong uh scent. But say if you're making like a really leathery perfume, you're obviously gonna use quite a bit more of the castorium. Um, but it works really nicely just as hints in other perfumes like resinous perfumes or even oriental, even floral, uh green forest perfumes, a little touch of castorium can sometimes add that I would light. Be Anything out of this, or should I shred that too? Um, it, it can be worth shredding, yeah, and putting in for sure. You wouldn't put it in to tincture. You would that's the outside outer skin. What I would do if I have two different materials, inner skin left. Sorry, there's still some inner skin in there left. It's both. Yeah, what you could do if you wanted is make a separate tincture. But what I've done previously is just use the inner part of the castorium. I haven't tinctured the outer part. Um, just recently some friends that did that and they got a really interesting aroma so maybe next time I would actually do that too man so yeah one sack isn't that much oh this is half a sack I told uh -huh. you to do the other one yeah yeah you you might find it lasts a long time though like uh, uh, the castorium I've got currently is from like three three years ago and some I have from four years ago. Uh, I did get a top of, of some other Castorium recently, but I still have some Castorium from a while back. Nice. So it does last a while. So the main thing I, I really wanted to do, what do you think of this, is the Royal Sandalwood for, for this. I thought oh, okay, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that would be nice. It's really spicy, that, that Sandalwood is, the one I have. Uh -huh. You'll find with the Castorium the the sandalwood will be uh, uh, will not play as big a part in the maceration. It will play a part, but perhaps 20% as opposed to the castorium being about 80% of the aroma. But ambergris is different. Ambergris is going to account for maybe, depends. it really depends on its age and its strength, but it could be anything from like 30% to 70, 60, 70% of the aroma. And the sandalwood will play more of an important part in the ambergris than it will in the castorium, just because the castorium is so potent and dominant. Do you macerate castorium then? Would you? Yeah, I have, yes. I prefer doing tinctures actually of castorium. I just prefer it because I can get the, the aroma so much stronger and I don't need to use a lot of it to get that impact. And I can use the sandalwood separately. So just my personal preference is. Um, I prefer castorium tincture, but I prefer DMSC maceration, and I prefer ambergris maceration, or the resinoid as well, which, which has mm -hmm. got a lot of more of my interest recently. Well, okay then. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take your advice and just leave this dry and think it through. Uh-huh. And we're going to make it. How much at a hundred ml? How much absolute would that be about? So a hundred ml of the tincture. Yeah, you're going to get about three percent um, back from it. So if you're going to do a hundred ml tincture, you might get three ml of castorium tar back or castorium resinoid absolute, what whatever you prefer to call it. Um, it would fit the term resinoid a bit more, but they tend to use tar for the the description of this reduced down tincture because it forms a very tar-like substance. But yeah, it gets a, a really, really interesting note once it's reduced down. It has the opening of the leather jacket and the the, the raw animalic muskiness of the castorium pod, 
but it also has something extra like this uh, this very vivid um velvety smooth beautiful smell it's very deep kind of purple aroma that's quite hard to describe i just find the the word velvety the most appropriate for it gotcha okay here i'm gonna do just tincture then well, i do not want to spill this i'll put it over here so if i spill it's on the ground and there we go I don't know why they don't put these on automatic. And excellent. Uh, instantly change of color as well. Yeah, Castoria has a good amount of resin, nowhere near as much as frankincense and other resins, but uh, it's better than Diamask and Anicha and uh, Sibyl. I need to get a Nietzsche. Yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful. This Onicha I have, this was, um, how much was this? was about 30 ml of an Nietzsche tincture, and I got this much of the resinoid from it, like so, so little. I sent you a bit of that, though. What did you, you've used the Nietzsche now. I think and we have some connection issues again. You've used the Nietzsche in, in one of your things, haven't you? I have, yes, yeah, in a few of my things, yeah. Yeah, in one actor that's due to be released soon is uh, Oceanus, and that has Anicha yeah. uh, in it, the Anicha I made. Um, and then there was a question proposed to me, is that from the resin or the animal? The Well, it's a snail, and the, the door that the snail comes out of, like it's almost part of the shell. It's not part of the animal. It's not quite part of the shell. They call it the snail door. So this particular door is what is used for the aroma. So I don't exactly know how they harvest these snail door shells, um, these parts of the, the shell, but uh, it's dried and they call it devil's fingernails because it looks like this kind of crooked, mm. uh, ridged fingernail brown fingernail and when you, you get it down into powder same thing yeah yeah exactly same with the pesto mortar powder it tincture it i have one upstairs um too i used quite a lot of it to get the absolute but i still have some left. i have an oil from somebody but not um, i need to get the material to play with like this yeah yeah it's a very interesting material and high yeah. racks i want to get i haven't got that yet yeah 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 it's very interesting Anything else on tinctures you can think of? I think we covered a ton today. Yeah, yeah, we have. We've covered a lot. I mean, uh, yeah, I think we'll we'll just uncover more as we go. Like, and people will ask questions. We can fill in on those questions. So, yeah, it's uh, we covered what we covered today, and that's good. And people can help expand on that by asking about uh, things we might have missed out or they'd want to know. Perfect. Alex, thank you. This is... Yeah one of the most informative things i wish i had this two years ago i might have started because my other tinctures i'm not yeah. i'm at i it just didn't have much help anyway uh, thank you sir thanks for all your yeah. help thank you brandon another great day. pleasure look forward to seeing you next week on our next venture thank you thank you everyone take care and uh, be blessed yeah.